Hello, I'm Andrew Marlowe. I'm Monica Marlowe. I'm still the idiot with a mouth. And this is Marlowe House Presents Scoundrels of a Stranger Sky. This is part. Part. Well, it's session three. Session three, part. part I don't six? know. Six. I think it, yeah. Uh, six. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Yeah, six. 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 I can count. <laughs> Six on YouTube. That's a, that's a and... quality education right there. <laughs> I didn't even have to use my fingers. And when last we... Oh, left... shoot. <laughs> Man, one day I'm going to remember to turn this, that the, I have to not only turn off the ringer, that I have to turn down the speaker. I've only done that like three or four times. So. Every episode. <laughs> well, now that's how you know that we're live. <laughs> you can hear us. All right. So, here we are. Can and everybody actually... see us and hear us? Are we all here? I see Michael. Michael? Well, we have to wait for the delay. But I do see us moving on the screen. And Scott's laughing at me. You know, like I he do does. That. Like he does. I do that. All right. So, when. Am I over there? Oh. Well, these are my characters. I don't know. Um, did you? I don't think I took me with me. <laughs> Not... right, okay. You're you're leaning in way too much on your camera. I well, think I know I where you are. He's looking for his character. That's because I, I was looking for me. I think he put you over here. Oops. Where you sit. On We're sorry, folks. Give us a moment to get our shit together. This is what happens when you try to multitask. That's me. I know. So while we, so the reason we're running a little late and the reason we don't have our character sheets is because we just recorded. Andrew just probably made everything explode by hitting, stepping on my my boom stand. Uh, we just recorded a kind of a retro, a uh, little bit of a re review, a little bit of a retrospective on the uh, most recent Night Shyamalan movie, Glass. So that will be going up to our patrons soon and then about a week later it'll go on to our youtube page so if you want to see what our thoughts are on the movie glass you should go ahead and back us right away at www.patreon.com backslash marlow house and then you won't have to wait except you'll have to wait until we get done with this recording so that andrew will have time to put it up well and there's gonna be some editing and some work done with it but uh yeah it'll go up and i'm not certain if it'll be a week I'm thinking it may be a, a hair longer than that before yep. we switch it over, but it'll only be available on Patreon. It will have it up via YouTube, but you'll have to have the link from Patreon to see it. Yes. So if you haven't backed us on Patreon, we would invite you to do that now anyway, because we would really appreciate it. <laughs> if you like what you're seeing, even a dollar a month helps us out because it'll help us get some additional equipment and artwork yes artwork yes we are thing. very excited we're very excited because we're working on our next um long running campaign this is this is actually intended to not be a long running campaign this is a short this is a mini series it is longer than the one session games we were running before obviously yes but it is not intended to be a long running could go for well weeks until and months. one of us gives up and 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 you know stop showing up but <laughs> We've never seen that, but uh, no. For for I'm looking at I'm looking at a long term campaign that could go months, maybe even years. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that won't be on Friday nights. Probably it'll still be something that we record. I'm not certain if we will stream that one yet or not. That one maybe just when we record and and post. Yeah. Um, because we want to take it a little bit more seriously and a little bit less of the uh, the tongue in cheek that we're doing here that's just part of why we're also working on trying to make sure our sound is better i'm hoping everybody thinks our sound is better this week than it was last week because last week our sound was not good speaking of which i just realized we still have our heaters on i'm not even certain they were noticeable well here comes the cold well depends on, it'll depend on how cold it gets down here as if we to whether we leave those off or not right so um yeah, for that one, we'd like to get some artwork put together, and that requires money. We're looking at getting some maps made uh, for the location that we're that we are creating, and we are creating it together as a group. The uh, three players, um, all of whom you've met at some point or another, 
and myself or have all put our heads together a little bit to work on what we're doing. Oh, Michael says he couldn't hear the heater, so let's turn those back on. No, you can't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> I, ha I had intentionally hit our, our stuff so that they might get hidden, and they weren't showing up, but I'm all about. We really appreciate it because it's cold down here. <laughs> I don't mind suffering for our art, but I'd rather not have to suffer too much. Yes. <laughs> Oh, right. So, with that in mind, when we last left off... We had baby dragons. And big dragons. Well, and yes. And snooty, snooty elves. Yes, well, elves are snooty by definition. Snooty elves. And you were being taken to go see the king or the emperor, depending on which time they said it <laughs> and who it was that said it. Because Scott called you out on your inconsistencies. Well, <laughs> there might have been a reason there was inconsistencies. So, because mm -hmm. elves are stupid. That's what he, exactly. They're Scott snooty liked, and stupid. Scott liked the elves are stupid reason, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but uh, that may not be the only reason. Nice cover. <laughs> All right. So, really quick, I am still playing Alara Gebbins, who is a lucky explorer who looks for trouble. I am playing Zotch Colvin, who is a skeptical speaker who doesn't do much. No, you don't. I would, but it sounds way too much like work. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the GM. Who also, who also doesn't, doesn't do, do much. much. <laughs> <laughs> you walked right into that. <laughs> I did. I've been waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Apparently, Scott's phone is also attempting to uh, alert him to something. Yeah, to a phone call. A phone call. Who's calling you at 930 on a Friday night? Uh, someone they... for whom it is 630 on a Friday night. <laughs> don't they know that you have better things to do than talk on the phone? I don't think she does. Oh, okay. <laughs> but she's in California, so I'll forgive it. Okay. Fair. Fair. All right. All so, right. So we're in a ship. We're on a boat. <laughs> You're on a spaceship. Space boat. We're space on a boat. boat. Space boat. It's a very big space boat. The space boat. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what you were talking about. Weren't, weren't it? <laughs> this is this is tone, not the tone tongue, we're looking. <laughs> this is not the tone we're looking for for our long term game. <laughs> It's fine. This is this is this is the this house is, is on fire. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> this is why this is why we do it on Twitch. This is this is the interactive stuff. This is the things that people like to see. And you know, Michael's over here going, I love you guys. So Michael needs a life. <laughs> we love you too, Michael. Um so we're on a boat. Yeah, you're we're on, on a, a space ship. boat. We're on a space boat, and we are flying through space. And you are being taken to the gas giant. We are in so much trouble. We are. We're in trouble. Did you know we're in trouble? No, we're in a boat. We are in that too. <laughs> you're in a boatload of trouble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, any rate, um. As we begin, we'll kind of pan outside to the ship, and it's it's cruising towards the gas giant. And it moves in um, and approaches, actually, the storm. And it rides fairly close so that the, the ship actually bucks in the atmosphere. And for a moment, you feel like you almost, like the whole ship might be swept into this swirling mass of clouds and you know destroyed but as you pass through the cloud cover and the, and, and the fringe of the storm you come out and the gas kind of opens up and it the way the light hits it from the sun everything takes on a bright hue um it's very cloud city bespin kind of looking and as you kind of move through the clouds you can see a citadel rise up out of the mist Ooh. and it I'll is bet floating that's big and therefore is way closer than it looks like I yes the images in this mirror are closer than they appear <laughs> and it is floating on some sort of 
rock base that looks like it was just like lifted out of the ground. Which is interesting since this is a gas giant. There's probably no solid ground here. Exactly. Hmm. These dragons are very these dragons are very crafty. Are you suggesting it's made of macrame? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> you just never know. I mean, they are dragons after all. Who knows what they what they do with string? Plaster of platinum. <laughs> <laughs> So the so, ship approaches the citadel. Yes. And as it approaches, you realize that it is defended both above and below. That there are guards stationed on ramparts that are actually built into this like strange rocky formation underneath. Okay. And the ship actually goes down and beneath. And then rises up through a gateway in the center courtyard. Oh, so there's, it's like a donut. Yeah. All right. All right. And as you come in, you can see that it is just like a giant donut. The entire castle, what would be a courtyard in a, in a regular castle is actually open space. Um, and as you come up, you can see um, uh, gating close up behind you I don't like this moon door this is bad whose idea was this it wasn't ours who, who had to have dragons I was I, that was just surely coincidental I was excited that didn't mean that that's what I wanted <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the ship docks and they roll out a uh, gangplank from the citadel. And there are ranks upon ranks of elves. And as you come in, you can see that the citadel is actually not built to human scale. It's built to dragon scale. It is built to massive scale. Whether it is dragons or giants or whatever, it is built to dragon scale. That's, that's what I figured. It's not built to Voltron scale, though. No. Okay, so Red Dragon. Red Dragon. Refer refer back to the previous show for that. So, we uh, so disembark because I guess we don't yes, have a so choice. You are, so you are escorted <laughs> off. And you are put to waiting in chambers. Which you kind of get the impression is sort of like a cell. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dragons, the little dragons, are hanging with you. Um, they don't take them away. So it is you, the dragons, in a well-furnished but clearly overly austere for the, the sort of grandeur of the citadel that you've come into. Well, I mean, we we do have their offspring, and they can't really just put us in a wet, damp cell at the bottom of the of the island. I hope. I'm hoping. I mean, they could. It would depend on if they want to kill us and get the babies away from us. Yeah, it would be bad. So, you wait, and you wait, and you wait. How do you spend this time? Well, I'm hoping that they gave us some food because I'm sure that these baby dragons they are hungry. They have not yet given oh, me food. Oh, this is terrible. Um, I have the wand of laser pointer. Yes. <laughs> so, um, hmm. It's a really good question. What do we do? I take a look around the room and see what what assets we might have at our disposal. There are four beds okay um they are not horribly uncomfortable but they are not well-made beds they do appear to be lice free well that's good um <clears throat> there are three thin blankets yes there is a blanket missing from one of the beds i can count to six but these elves cannot count to four this is very disappointing um, there are empty food trays stacked in a corner. 
that look like they've probably been sitting here for a while. They're not very tidy either. Ugh. There is a chamber pot. Ew. There is something of interest here. Which, today. which, which, which <laughs> there's, there's nothing of interest in the chamber. There's nothing of interest in the chamber pot. But I hear otherwise. <laughs> Well, there might be now. He was telling us how he was spending his time. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> that might have been an, that might not have been a, a a question. That might have been an announcement. <laughs> Please don't. Um, I'll persuade it not to stink. <laughs> they... <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Okay. So. Beds, chamber pot, Not old much trays, no tables, no chairs. There's like two chairs and a side table. That's nice. We've got four beds, three blankets, two chairs, and a side table, and a partridge in a pear tree. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> Are there any like the side table has the chamber pot on it? Ew. Underneath. Oh, underneath. Okay. I mean, that's marginally better. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's got its own little shelf for it. Oh, okay. There's a, <sighs> there's a small dry wash basin on top of the table. Okay. These guys are jerks. And this is where you kind of come to the, well, it's got you know nice tapestries on the walls. It's not really cold. It's really nice stonework. Uh, there's a fireplace, but there's nothing burning in the fire. It doesn't really look like a cell, but all the accoutrement it is definitely cell -like. a cell. So, uh, I don't know. I guess we'll start... Is the fireplace completely empty? It is got some old, ashy logs in it, but they can probably be re relit with the right kindling. Or, help. Tickle Small his help. belly! Uh, is there a flute to this fireplace? Yes. Pop it open? Okay, pops open. Can I reach inside? See if it's been cleaned at all. Actually, it has been. All right. Actually, while you're in there fiddling around. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is Fine. terrible. This is terrible news. Nobody wants these. Well, I mean, we do. <laughs> I mean, we do. Go ahead. Something bites you on the finger. No. You come down, and there's this small, ugly, kind of gnarled-faced man, about four inches tall, with, uh, like, Tinkerbell wings, but they've obviously been broken at some point, and they're healed kind of crooked towards the top. Hey! What's a big idea? You bit me. Damn right I did. You... What are you doing in there? I'm a flu elf. I keep it clean. How big is that? What? Flu. Big enough. I walk around in it. Could I? Yeah. <laughs> no. Do you know any food elves? Ooh, a 19 to see if he is lying to me. What? Basically seeing if he's yeah. lying to me. Are you sure? Because I'd hate to I'd hate to accidentally drop you around my hungry dragons. <laughs> I know taste good. I don't think they care. They're babies, and they haven't eaten for, like, seven hours. I can probably find you some food. That would be fantastic. Um, can, can you let go of me? You gonna bring me some food? I will make sure the dragons get food. And I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be dragon food any more than he does. Set him down. All right, so he takes a sort of a, a an awkward running start. 
kicks himself into the air and the little wings kind of go and they don't do a really great job of getting him into the air and so he kind of like does this like bob bob and then he's up into the chimney Well, I hope he brings back. Food. And you hear, don't light it. Okay, I won't light it. Well, now that we've done that, uh, get out the wand of laser pointer, okay. which doubles <laughs> as a flashlight. Okay, <laughs> kind of check out the flu. It's graded. You can see where he was able to crawl through, but there isn't going to be enough room for you in there. Worth checking. Definitely worth checking. Well, what do you think you're going to do if you get up the chimney anyway? I mean, what are you going to, like, steal a ship? That worked so well for us the last time. I mean, really? Uh, I mean, a little one. Are you are you, are you you planning to leave? Because I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. I'm just trying to think ahead. <laughs> it doesn't hurt to be prepared. As it were. I can understand that. Well, I can too, but I'm just... <laughs> So are you guys spending your time doing anything else while you're waiting? Well, now you're waiting for food and for whatever audience that they're going to call you for. So did the babies seem to have any kind of language skills? No. No. Ooh. Yeah. Well. Currently currently they they make some they make some noises at one another. They growl, they chirp, they spit flames. Um who knows his name? Who knows his name? Great. Mhm. <laughs> he was always the smartest one. <laughs> Behold my babies. <laughs> yeah. Um I mean we've got some trays. Uh, just, I guess kind of play with them a little bit. Yeah. I I mean there's really not a lot we can do. We need to keep the babies entertained and we definitely need them to be like apparently attached to us. So my goal is yeah. to make them look could be as simple as just like underhand roll or overhand rolling the uh, the tins out so that they roll back. OK, just so that they kind of chase them back and forth. They they stay entertained if you do that with them. Okay. Uh, they do break out into fights periodically. Which does occasionally in, in, engender a bit of uh, gouts of flame and snapping teeth. Um, I, I think breaking that up is playful. a terrible. I'm pretty sure most of it seems to... mostly playful. Don't 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 get involved. Yeah, yeah, that that's like lose lose a hand, burn 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 your arm kind of kind of territory. Yes. So, um, with that in mind, you wait for probably about another forty minutes before there's this clank, scrape sound in the hallway. I Clank, think dinner's here. Scrape. I think dinner is arriving. And a metal food tray is drug around the corner by the flu elf. All right. So the door Which is really more of a fairy of sorts, but I guess he's got delusions of grandeur. So is the door open? I mean Yeah. Oh. Oh, so we could just walk out. We don't even have to escape through the chimney. We could just walk out. You but You could walk out into the hallway. <laughs> but but, but there's probably someone there waiting for us. That is a that is a that is a reasonable guess. All right. So as the food fairy elf brings no, it is it is the flu fairy. It's the, the flu fairy is bringing us food. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. He comes scraping around the corner. I, I feel uncomfortable with the idea of a flu fairy bringing us food. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your flu shot? You're fine. So we uh, we'll, we'll go help him with the tray. What is on the tray? Um, probably best not to ask. Okay, so we just don't look too closely at what's on the tray. Right. It's not for us. Yeah, and it is clearly not food that was ever intended for you. Okay. You did not go to the kitchen for it. You're pretty certain that he wrestled something in the, uh, the walls and has subdued it, put it on a tray, and drug it around the corner. That sounds like a terrible plan. <laughs> <laughs> I 
it does resemble some sort of you know rodentia of some sort oh i'm sure that mom and i'm sure that the king will be thrilled to know that we're feeding his children uh rodents from the walls but they didn't offer us any food for baby dragons and they should know better so we uh yeah we do that okay and the dragons descend on the food pretty fiercely um the little flu flu fairy flu elf uh kicks himself into the air and keeps pretty clear of the dragons yes um at this point you can see that he is he is armed with a tiny tiny crossbow sure that'll be very effective against baby dragons <laughs> like it would be at all but it looks like it might hurt like a son of a gun if it were to hit you yeah kill no probably not unless they're poisoned but you definitely like so they could be hornet it's sting. A blue fairy yes it could be poisoned indeed all right so uh let the babies eat and Hang out. Cuddle on them. If that's a thing. I imagine they... they it probably is. I mean, they're they're kind of... like. There's start... probably only room for one of them on right. a lap. We probably have to sit on the beds to... <laughs> After they've had their fill, they start to doze. All right. We'll move everybody to a bed. And... It's not much longer past that. Then an elf comes in. She's in uh, burnished plate mail so that it gleams. She has a sword hilt hanging from her her waist, but there's no blade. Ooh. Fancy. Thinking it's an energy weapon. Could be. All right. And she looks at you and says, Your audience is. Your audience time is, is nearing. Well, the babies are sleeping. The babies can stay. It would probably be for the best anyways. That's a terrible idea. I don't want to leave them alone. They'll be fine. I think she's saying we don't want to walk in there with baby dragons that are attached to us. I think it would be for your benefit if they were not there. Your friend is correct. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll get myself all spruced up with nothing. <laughs> Thank her and Elvin. She cocks an eyebrow. You've learned our tongue. Quick study. Hmm. Interesting. Do you have what you need to be prepared for a proper audience? We have no idea. No, we're going to go meet presumably the emperor or the king, and we are dressed like this. This is a terrible way to go in. Fortunately for you, dragons are not up on the current fashion. Oh, well, good. Does my hair look okay? I don't even have a mirror. I think you'll be fine. All right, then we're fine. Let's go. Let's go. Well, I mean, I don't know. I can't she see leads myself. You around, she leads you in further. And do you have wills? It's a very odd and specific question to ask us. A will to live, absolutely. Yes, I have. <laughs> oh, yes, I have a will to live. Do you have anything like that in order for for your loved ones behind yes i'm leaving them my baby dragons because i know they're responsible for my children she kind of cocks an eyebrow again indeed okay 
who will it's care for the could, who will care for my young. It is just that we could delay this a little bit longer if you wish to see a barrister. Well, that sounds like a fantastic idea. I don't have everything in order. <laughs> what? <laughs> I will have the court the court minister apply for a stay. What? <laughs> a delay of audience. I know that. I know that. I'm questioning my friend here. Are you so interested in fast getting in there to die? <sighs> Death isn't guaranteed. It could be so much worse. <laughs> Think of the children. We have to make sure that they're cared for in our absence. Great. I'll get right on making a will so that they go back to the captain we stole them from. <laughs> I think it's a terrible plan. Don't you don't you have any family? Probably, but who keeps up with them? That would be too much for you, wouldn't it? So have you seen my penmanship? <sighs> I don't write letters. You don't do much of anything. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> So with that, she's kind of giving you this look like, do I go for this? Yes, day? go get. Yes. Yes. We would like to speak with the barrister. OK, so the barrister arrives. It takes a bit of time for the barrister to show up. But I'm just going to zip through this. Um, basically helps you put together a, a, a request for us for a stay of audience. Um, which is beginning and beginning to sound more and more like some sort of like stay of execution. <laughs> um the more they ask you questions like this particular audience is a bad thing. So they apply for that. They put all that, all that together. They organize all that for you. Uh, the barrister is willing to also in turn uh, arrange for uh, wills to be drawn up, but eventually you, you eclipse your time. They do start bringing you food too. Okay. But it takes about a week. A week? Wow. This takes a lot longer than I thought. Well, to elves, this doesn't take any time at all. Same with the dragons. This is like, yo. To your mind, they're they're like getting into like the deep minutia and putting things off, but all in all, it, it's they seem to think it's they're they're rushing. This is great. It does get a little bit nicer once they realize that they've got they're going to have you here for longer. Um, we get another blanket. The blankets are improved. <laughs> Some pillows are improved. They bring in uh, uh, dragon beds, like little warm warmer beds for the the dragon Aww. the 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 hatchlings. Okay, we do not call them by the names you've given them. That would be a terrible idea. I think I think if they realized that you were calling their babies by those names, we would be in trouble. <laughs> um. So, by the time it's all said and done, you're probably thoroughly, thoroughly bored and ready to go see this. Can we one way or the die other? Die now? Are you insane? <laughs> no, no. I don't want to. No more die. days with the lawyer. I don't want to. I don't want to die. I'm too young to die. I'm too pretty to die. I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't want to die. <clears throat> Sorry, did I get too loud there? A little bit. All right, we'll go. So you finally go in. Mm-hmm. And. You're brought in before the Emperor Dragon. King Dragon. The elves tend to call him one thing. 
dragons don't seem to care. They kind of use both terms intermittently. Um, but, you know, so for the most part, they've been referring to him as the as the emperor. Okay. And uh, you go in. He has very pretty frills. He has... Um, and he's naked. Well, he you is stop. naked in scales. <laughs> um, of course, he's naked. He has he has bright blue and green scales. Ooh, also patterned. The babies aren't like that though yet, are mm -hmm. they? No. He's very iridescent. Ooh. Shiny, very. I wonder how much he's worth. So you are the humans. Did my hatchlings. That is not accurate. We are the humans who were present when your abducted hatchlings hatched. We were unaware that they were present on the ship we were on. And at this point, you also notice that in a chariot, mm -hmm. a floating chariot, Near the near the dragon's head, are the two elves that were on the ship with you. Okay. Those jerks are here. And one of them leans over and starts speaking. Okay. You can't make out what he's saying. Um, the dragon nods its head. Emerus tells me that you might be capable of a task. Would you consider it? We are typically very capable of tasks. We would consider it. Before I broach this with you, I want assurances of your skills. There will be a test. Well, I mean, we did successfully steal a ship that happened to have you... baby dragon eggs on them, but okay. To pass this test regardless I want to know that the souls my children are bonded to can protect them so it's not a math test no okay I might be okay <laughs> amorous Go with these humans. The Seneschal will set you on the right course. Okay. So, the chariot flies down to you and the elf gets off white faced his friend doesn't look you know at all phased by it but the one that is now evidently emrys he's kind of gone a little chalky he's scared we're in trouble and he licks his lips After, after reviewing your case and seeing what there was to be seen and interviewing the individuals in trying to find you, or not you, but whoever had the... The clutch. The clutch. Ah. Uh, I found that you were 
potentially useful and capable and I didn't expect to be involved in in having the test I, I'm not certain why I have to be tested with you well you don't know us very well then I'm sure we will be fine in Elvin it's all right you'll fit right in So what is this test? So you kind of wander out and it's like, I don't know. But the fact that I'm being asked to participate is not usually a good sign. And the Seneschal is the one who sets up the games. I have a feeling that these aren't fun games. Not normally, no. Okay. I, I have... I hope we get to play Cypher System. I have, a, <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, no. Now we're in trouble. He just had to say it. The words have been spoken. The Good words night, everybody. have been spoken. And with so, that, we're going to take... No, I'm just no. kidding. I'm just kidding. So, you are escorted back to your chambers. Uh, Emrys does not get to look any... Doesn't begin to look any better. Um, the elf woman that came through earlier comes through and asks, there, asks you if there's any equipment that you feel that you will need. She says armor, weapons. What kind of games are these? It's a gladiatorial arena. Oh, for goodness. We could use another person. You have another person. We could use another other person. You have another other person. Okay. And she points back at Emerus. I, 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 I saw him. Emerus doesn't look incapable. Is he, is he armored? Does he have armor and a weapon? Very lightly. Okay, he's going to need something else. He's like, I can't wear much more. Okay. It gets in the way. All right. And then you realize that he is the elf. He, he's, he's the one that got ch chucked up by the throat. <laughs> yeah. He's the spellcaster. I could use my bow. Just because I assume that was taken. Actually, no, your your gear, they'll, they'll bring back all your gear. Okay. Yeah, we'll need yeah. our gear. You need your gear. That's fine. Do you need anything else? No, I don't think so. Uh, um, what kind of devices do you have handy? What do you mean devices? Z Zotch can now carry four ciphers. Oh. I don't think I did that one. Nope, I did not. Um... She tells you, I think I can come up with a couple of things that might be of use. And when she comes back, she has two things that she will that she's able to offer you. Um, one is a speed boost. And the other, she tells you, is anti-venom. Are we going to need that? Hmm? Are you planning to poison us? You never know what you'll face in the arena. Okay. That sounds terrible. That sounds awful. <laughs> it does. It sounds terrible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can I trade out one of my subtle, subtle ciphers? Yes. I will take both of those. Which one are you trading out? Uh, mechanically minded. Okay. Mine are not very good for combat, so I was just curious. Mine most kind of aren't. Um, one of my subtle ciphers I have left is Healing Insight, so I can 
I get a uh, decrease by one step healing task to help somebody else. Okay. And then specializing groups. Uh, in a round in which it appears you will be attacked more than once, the difficulty of all your defense rolls is decreased by one step. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, subtle ones go, especially in a gladiatorial arena. That might not be a bad one to have. Correct. Um, I don't think I can wear any armor heavier than my armor and cloth. She does tell you that they have some fine elven chain in the stores, which is light armor, but it does one better protection. That if I be wear useful. if I wear armor, then I'm my speed defense goes away. Mine doesn't. I'm trained without armor, and since I'm specialized and trained without armor on my speed defense, it is worth lowering my difficulty by two. That's legit. Yeah, so it's just a special material light armor. I, on the other hand, will totally take you up. She's like, okay. Um, she quickly takes your measurements. Like, totally businesslike, not... <laughs> We're getting married. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody's doing that. But she does take your measurements, and then she leaves. Short time later, she brings you back armor, gives you time to suit up, get all your stuff together. She's got your gear in tow, uh, the, cy the ciphers in tow. Everything's ready. They bustle you off. They put you on another ship, and you leave the uh, main castle, and you fly through the clouds for another one. And as you're flying through, you can see a number of dragons circling um, and you're flying around various places, but no, none is meant, there aren't nearly as many as there are flying around this particular rock that you land on. I know that colors me surprised. Um, it has perches in the upper stadium areas where dragons can land. And watch. There are also scattered above the arena area hundreds of translucent glass, uh, like crystal balls, floating in the air above it. Man, they can't even be bothered to get in here to watch this. And she tells you that those are remote viewing uh, lenses. I mean, if I could hang out at the sports tavern and watch, <laughs> get some they are, they are They are exclusively <laughs> for the, they are exclusively for the emperor's use. Oh, okay. So the emperor likes wings. <sighs> All right. Um, you are set down on the on the uh, pitch which is gravel and sand for the most part. Oh, really? There are a couple of wood panel uh, portions of the ground, and one of those appears to actually be hinged like it opens, uh, like a pit. There are a number of empty cages around the outer ring. And then there are the gates that you come in, and then there are matching gates at each of the like cardinal directions. Okay. That match. You know what I do realize I didn't ask for, hmm. but I do need is a ranged weapon. Is it okay if I? Yeah. Um. Are we talking she can bows? Bring you a bow. Okay. She can bring you a bow or a sling. Which do you want? A bow. Is that uh no modifier is it a two or a four it's a medium weapon okay so it's a four all right so you guys sit down in the arena and are you know let to walk out your your gate there's some announcing in draconic at least that's what you're assuming it is because it's a low gravelly voice it's very guttural growling and hissing that's gonna be a pain to pick up 
Yeah, it is. And then, but you're gonna have to because the babies are gonna talk it. Well, I guess maybe Fun. I don't know. Do you think dragons are born learning, knowing their language? Do they have to learn it the same way human babies learn their languages? The things we don't know. <laughs> things that you've never bothered to know in character, probably either. I know, right? Yeah. <clears throat> never had a need to. The <laughs> gates at the far end open. And um, for parts of it, Emra starts translating. He's like, all right, they're announcing us. Oh. Okay, oh, you need, no. okay, you need to, to translate faster, Emrys. Okay. Um, you have to keep me alive. Well, that was the plan. No. Like, that's the challenge. We have to keep you alive? Yeah. Okay, so... Part of this plan is for you to help us keep you alive. I, I, I will do my best. But if you die, then, well, that makes sense. That's what they told us they wanted, to see if we could keep keep their babies alive. That's fair, I guess. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about it. Are I we, mean, Were we planning to take the babies into a gladiatorial arena? Well, I wasn't, but I'm not really sure that we actually have a choice on this. I mean, it's either die fast or die slow. <laughs> What what are we fighting? It says they haven't announced it. You go, you, then they they lead you out, and you know the announcement is, you know, they they he's like, and you're going to be fighting. Oh shit! And as he says, oh shit, the doors open. Yes. And eight large, and I'm like twice the size of your typical wild turkey, but they look like eight turkeys come running out. I swear as God is my witness, I thought they could fly. They come, they come running out, uh, doing like this 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 <laughs> scream as they come at you <laughs> do it again <laughs> do it again and, and they wonder no. and, he, and he wants us to be more serious i mean how are you supposed to be serious with that i'm not serious with this okay all right. So And with the the charging with the the charging ranks of turkeys, we're going to call it. Okay. This has been Marlowe House presents Scoundrels of a Stranger Sky. I'm Andrew Marlowe. I'm Monica Marlowe. I'm going to shoot a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back in a few.